Hello and welcome to another video of time series forecasting. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to chapter number two and talk about time series graphics. And the first thing to do in a time series analysis is always to start with the plot of the data. And the plot of the data will enable you to observe different features of the data. And that will allow you to see any patterns, unusual observations, any changes over time and relationships between different variables. Therefore, it is important that we always start our time series analysis by looking at the graph of the data. And in this chapter, I'm going to look at different aspects of time series graphics. I'm going to start this chapter by looking at uh, how to set your data in R and then I'm going to show you how to plot that time series. We'll look at the different types of uh, time series patterns in this data. In particular, I'll talk about trend, seasonal and cyclical patterns in a time series. And obviously we can uh, observe these time series patterns in our time plot. In the future, we'll use more sophisticated methods to observe these uh, patterns. We'll look into seasonal plots, seasonal subseries plots and scatter plots uh, in this regard. And then I'll talk about how to observe relationships between uh, different variables by looking at the scatter plots. At the same time, we'll look at uh, the relationship between a series to its own lagged values by looking at autocorrelation. We'll see that uh, autocorrelation can show you different aspects or the patterns in a time series. In particular, I'll talk about ACF or autocorrelation function and uh, building on that, we'll discuss any series with time patterns or a series without any observable patterns and this type of series is called white noise series. At the end of the chapter, I will introduce you to loom box test that we can use to see if uh, a series depicts uh, autocorrelation or not. So this is pretty much the agenda of uh, this uh, chapter. So let's start uh, with uh, looking at time series objects. Okay, so the very first thing that you do in a time series forecasting task is to graph your data. And this way you will be able to observe various patterns in the series. And you can also observe any outliers or unusual observations in the data so that you can talk to an expert about it. And then you can also observe any changes over time hence uh, talk about uh, the trend in the series. So here's an example. In this example, you have annual data about a series from 2012 to 2016 and these are the values. For example, it could be total sales of a firm and in 2012 it was 123 and in 2013 it was 39 and in 2016 it was 110. Now, we need to set up this data in R and one way to set up this data is to use this combine function. Now this combine function will enable you to combine all these observations in the data set. So we're going to separate all these observations by a comma and then combine all these observations. And then we're going to use uh, this function ts function time series function and I'm going to pass this data set in this function. Now a function takes different arguments. So these are the arguments those are going into this function. The first argument is our data set and this data set contains these five observations. And the next argument that will go into this function is we have to describe a start date or the end date of uh, our data set. I'm going to define start date as 2012 which is right from here and then R will automatically know that this first observation is the observation for 2012 and assign all these uh, subsequent observations their respective years. We can accomplish the same task by first assigning these observations a name called Z. So this is an assigning operator. All we are doing here is we are calling these observations Z. We are combining these, we are creating a column of uh, all these observations and then 
we are passing the same data as z here and then we obviously we have to tell r about the start date which in this case is 2012 and then in this case the frequency will be one because we are dealing with the, the annual data so this is how you can set up your data in r and i'll show you an example in r next okay so we are in r for this class whenever you start any analysis this is the very first thing that you have to do you have to call this library fpp2 and this will bring all the packages those are needed for our time series analysis so these are uh, some of the packages uh, that uh, this library is bringing okay so we can uh, set up our time series object in different ways and this is the first way so remember these are the five observations and we are combining these five observations and then we are using time series function and uh, the very first argument that's going to go into this function is our observations or our data and then we have to define a start date which in this case is 2012 and uh, we are saving this time series object as data set y so let's uh, save this and then have a look at it and then we can uh, select this and click run and we can look at this so now look at this we know that this y object is a time series the start date is 2012 and the end date is 2016 so observe here we never told r that our end date is 2016 but r automatically assigned various years to all these uh, observations and then the frequency is one because we are using annual data and uh, these are the observations another way of accomplishing the same task is to first combine all these observations and uh, save it as z now z is saved you can uh, see z here as well it has five values and then we can pass on this uh, z into our time series uh, function so the first argument that's going to go into this ts function is our data set which is z and then we have to define uh, a start date or end date and uh, we're going to save it as y and we can have a look at y and again it's giving us the same results you can know more about this time series object by getting help by typing in this question mark and then ts and you can read this time series object help file to know more about uh, this function and different arguments that go into this function so this is how you can um, start your analysis by using a time series uh, function so the next time when you will use your own data you will bring your own data and then you have to use this ts function to convert your data into a time series object so that we can apply all the tools that you will learn in this class all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye